We all know teachers do not get paid enough, and yet somehow we pay for most of the supplies we need in our classroom. Well, today's video, I'm talking about all the things you actually need and will use every day in your special education classroom. So if you're looking for what you actually need and you don't wanna spend your entire paycheck for it, this is the video for you. Warriors, my name is Pam and I've been a special education teacher for the past 10 years and I'm here to help you with your special education classroom. If you want the tips, tricks, and hacks for becoming a successful special education teacher, then click the subscribe button and give me the big thumbs up so more teachers out there can find me and make sure to leave any questions down below. Today's topic is all about the stuff you actually need in your special education classroom. Stuff that's going to save you time, money, and generally your sanity. These are the items I've spent money on year after year or I have invested in and have really paid off in the long run and hopefully they help you too. So let's get into it. The first thing you are going to need is a laminator. This is my laminator. Um, Will you be able to borrow your friend's laminator? Probably. Will your school have a communal laminator? Maybe. But you really want to have your own laminator, okay? Um, this, I just recently upgraded my laminator. I used to have the Amazon Basics, which is completely great and fine, and I will link that one down below as well. But I upgraded to the Scotch brand, and I absolutely love it. It gets hotter faster. It has extra room on the sides. So when you put in the lamination pockets at an angle, it doesn't ruin the whole lamination. It is perfect. The truth is having your own laminator is just gonna make your job that much easier. You won't have to wait or barter or beg to get the laminator. And to be honest, when you're first starting out, you're going to be laminating a ton of work. So it's better to have your own in your classroom, ready to go, so when you need it, when your paraprofessionals have the opportunity to be laminating, it's there. It's good to have. The next thing that is completely essential to my classroom is a three-hole punch. Now the three-hole punch for me is more about organization. I do not do well with filing cabinets. The second it's out of my sight, it's dead to me. So instead I keep everything in binders really, really, really labeled and really, really organized. And I do this for literally everything, data, parent communication, communication with paraprofessionals, general papers that everyone hands to you on that first day. Literally everything has a binder and it has a place in my organization bookshelf. So having a three hole punch handy is just essential for me. I have a lot of workbooks that they use, reusable workbooks that are laminated and bound with binder clips. I have social stories. I have a ton of work for my students, whether it's their morning work or just a fun themed work that they do every day that's incentivizing for them. Uh, I've also three hole punched and having the three hole punch is really handy for those workbooks because it's easy for me to bind them like a regular book using binder clips. Just punch three holes, binder clips, and good to go. And I do have to say, these books really last from year to year. Just saying. Next up we have scissors. These are Walcott scissors. Westcott. These are Westcott scissors. I have actually three pairs of this exact scissor because they are really good and they really last. But why do I have three pairs, you say? Oh, okay. When you're working with students who only are incentivized by food or very young students, it's easy to use edible reinforcements. But... I don't want to give a kid 50 gummy bears in a day. So what I do is I take the edible scissors and I will cut them down into smaller pieces. The students really don't care if it's a little bit of gummy bear or a lot of bit of gummy bear. They're happy for gummy bear. Um, the other thing I have is a Velcro scissor and I have a regular cutting scissor. You want to have a specific Velcro scissor because the Velcro scissors get gunky really fast from the glue on the back of the Velcro strip. If you are cutting Velcro, um, while I do have a tip for cleaning gooey gunky scissors, you're going to have to tune in next video where I talk all about cleaning in your special education classroom, including the tip to get your Velcro scissors nice and clean. That being said, having a dedicated Velcro scissor means that every scissor is not going to become the Velcro scissor and then you don't have to clean all your scissors all the time, which is something that I've definitely had to do before. Okay, let's talk about tape. While your school might have masking tape or scotch tape, you really want to have two very specific types of tape, and that is duct tape, which I have left in my classroom because COVID shut everything down. I don't have everything with me. Um, and you're gonna want clear packing tape. Why clear packing tape? Uh, clear, clear packing tape is a very quick and easy way to do a 
shabby lamination job. If you have to laminate one tiny piece of paper, you're not gonna get out the laminator and get out the lamination to do one tiny square. You're gonna do a quick lamination and then the next time you're running a bunch of stuff through the laminator, you're going to laminate that piece again. So having a, a quick makeshift one is very easy with clear packing tape. Also, you're going to want to put things on student desks and it's easier with clear packing tape. It doesn't distract from the visual. That being said, kids pick, they pick at the tape. It doesn't matter if it's clear or not. So you're gonna wanna have tape on hand to reattach when necessary. Okay, the other thing I'm gonna talk about is decorative duct tape. And you're like, what? Yeah, they have a ton of it. It comes in a million different colors. It comes with cute patterns. I think they even have a mac and cheese one, which is really cool. I will link that down below, but it works so good now i don't know outside of new york i've never taught outside of new york but in new york our school buildings tend to be some kind of cement in the walls where the temperature truly affects the walls and nothing sticks to the walls whether it's winter and it gets cold at night and then really hot in the morning and all your anchor charts come off the wall or it's you know summer and it's really hot and the air conditioner comes up and it knocks all your visuals off the wall again so duct tape is super helpful for sticking things to the wall and having them stuck. And because they're decorative, most of the time people don't really know it's duct tape. Um, it's also a really quick time saver for bulletin boards. Instead of spending 20 minutes in the hallway stapling and cutting and then recutting and then restapling and patching a border together, just stick up some duct tape and you're done. It takes like five minutes. The next thing we're going to talk is Velcro. Now I told you a type of Velcro that you're probably going to get, and that is the strip Velcro, which is just the line of Velcro that you're going to cut into little pieces. Now I am going to say something controversial. Most people love dot Velcro or they love strip Velcro and there's no middle ground. I personally think it depends on the project, but you're going to want to have both because dot Velcro is a complete time saver. Uh, if you're doing a workbook, you're gonna want dots. Uh, they come in hard and soft. You just, they come in a box just like other Velcro. I've seen giant wheels of it. I don't know where to get those. So if you do know, please let me know because I'm obsessed with dot Velcro just as much as strip Velcro. But I definitely use more dot Velcro than strip Velcro. I just do. So strip Velcro. If you're doing a counting and cardinality workbook where you're trying to have the students put the certain amount of the item into the location they need to put it, you want strip Velcro because dot one-to-one -one or quick workbook done, dot Velcro is your buy. That being said, dot Velcro is an investment. It is by far one of the most expensive things I am recommending today, but it is an investment in your time. It saves so much time because the second you think, oh, I just have to cut this Velcro into 50 pieces, you're not only cutting the Velcro, sticking the Velcro, you have to clean the Velcro scissors. It takes a lot of time. Dot Velcro, you stick and you go and you're done. Another investment that will pay off in the long run are these dry erase markers. These dry erase crayons. And you're like, what, do they work? Um, heck yes, they work. And they last for friggin' ever. How many of you have had a student just forgot to put the cap on, right? Everyone has the student who cannot put the cap on the pen no matter how much they try. It's just an OT issue. But these, you don't need the cap. They work perfectly well every single time. They come in many different colors. And if it's an added bonus, they're eco-friendly. I get these particular markers from an eco-friendly school supply shop called Wisdom Supplies. They are amazing. I bought them for my home as well. These are actually my daughter's dry erase markers. Um, and she uses them as crayons. They work on many surfaces and they come off very clean. This also will stop the dreaded I accidentally wrote on the whiteboard with permanent marker. <laughs> Has anyone had that happen to them? I did a full graphing lesson in permanent marker and didn't realize till I tried to erase. But I also have a tip for getting rid of permanent marker on dry erase boards in the next video. We are an investment. Each marker is $3. Yes, they are $3 each, but they last forever and they really do work really well. Um, the other thing is you really need to buy a specific pencil sharpener with them. It comes on the site where the markers are. I will also link that down below. Another really good tool that helps with uh, edible reinforcements is the bead box. Now I don't have that. It's in my classroom so I'm going to show you an Amazon link of it. 
but this is meant for beading or jewelry making. I use it for edibles. You, each little box is a different snack, so one will be gummy bears, one will be uh, potato chips, one will be Doritos, one will be pretzels, and then the student gets to make a choice of what they are working for. We're building on choice, we're building reinforcements, we're building their array of reinforcements. Now, the bead box is pretty big and it does not travel well. Unless you're going on a field trip, I suggest bringing the big box. But if you're going from classroom or your student really needs reinforcing in the hallways, I suggest using a big pill case. Just they do the same thing, they keep everything divided but in a smaller section and you're not carrying this more things in your hand, it easily fits in your pocket. As a parent, I just want to say these also work really great for road trips. If you want to give your kid a little snack and not a ton of snacks, it works in the back seat and your car is not a mess. Okay, the final thing I'm recommending today is probably the cheapest. It's a clipboard. I don't know what that is. White erase? I don't know. Uh, a clipboard. I got this at the Dollar Tree. I got a ton of them. They're each a dollar. Uh, you can get them on Amazon in a big pack. I think it's like five bucks for five of them. This is my big data hack. It's the clipboard. I use the strip Velcro and I place the clipboard wherever I'm taking the data. So if you are taking bathroom data on washing hands or using the bathroom, there's so many wet surfaces, you just Velcro the back, stick it where you want it to be, and then I like to attach a pen to it. So I always have a pen. I swear, I spend half my life looking for a pen. I've also used these by the front door. My service providers know that if they have to write a note to the parent, there's gonna be a communication sheet by the door with the student's name on top. And that way they can write notes to parents without interrupting me or going into their book bags or spending an absorbent amount of time in my room just to communicate with parents what they did, what their needs are. This way it's easy, just a checklist. Actually, I have this checklist in my TBT store. Feel free to check it out. So that was my classroom essentials that will help you in your classroom every day, save you time, money, or sanity. Everything I've talked about is linked down below, whether it's my TPT store or just where you can get all these supplies. Let me know in the comments below what is your classroom essential? What can you not live without in your classroom? I hope this video helped you when you were shopping for your classroom or the coming school year. If it did, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more classroom content. I'm always looking to make more of what you want to see, so please leave me a comment down below letting me know what videos I should do next. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!